Titans, go! to Titan Talk, the Titans podcast. I'm Charles Skaggs, back in Titans Tower, ready to talk some Titans. Nope. Well, actually, we're going to talk about Doom Patrol today. Yes, but, we are but, temporarily but, uh, the Doom Patrol podcast. Yeah, we're, we're essentially Doom Talk. Today. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. But uh, the reason we're talking Doom Patrol, obviously, because Doom Patrol appeared in the fourth episode of Titans Season 1, and... Uh, is sort of connected to to Titans in that way. It's almost like a spin-off series because you had a lot of the same actors uh, reprising their roles on Doom Patrol. And also in Episode 2, we get um, Cyborg. So there is a Titans connection here. So, so as far as I'm concerned, it counts. Yeah, uh, though I don't think there is many uh, same actors reprising roles. Maybe – the physical role and then someone else doing the voice maybe, but uh, it felt like uh, almost an all new cast. Yeah. Well, actually the, in the, in the Titans episode, they went and got uh, Brendan Fraser who plays uh robot man. They did the voice in oh, Titans. Oh, did do that one. Okay. And, and, I and, so, that. And, so, and, and so did Matt Bomer who does okay, uh, negative well, man. Oh, okay. So, well, that's good. I, yeah, I had so not, I'd forgotten that. The, the, the only one that's really different, is the chief obviously because in the in Titans he was played by Bruno Bashir, yeah. but here he's played by Timothy Dalton. I think he, Timothy Dalton does a much better job. Yeah, no offense to Bruno. The, yeah, Bruno, yeah. but um, if you can get um, a Time Lord and a James Bond to play yes. one of your leads, you do it. <laughs> yes. So uh, um, obviously, I'm here with Jesse. Yes. Welcome back, Jesse. Thanks. Uh, uh, yeah, we uh, we definitely missed you. We uh, Phil and I talked you. about Young Justice in our previous episode here, but uh, you were sorely missed. Well, thank and, you. That's very nice. Phil but obviously is we understand, truly. We understand that you've got uh, yeah. some rather important commitments right now. Absolutely. So you know, take Phil care is um, as much as Charles and I are really, really passionate and strong comic fans um phil's in the phil has to be in the discussion of one of the most knowledgeable members of our network and so um if you cannot have me i think that's (laughs) that's a pretty good fill in might even be a step up so well no it's not a step up you're you're obviously our favorite and uh but uh but phil we obviously appreciate and uh because he is such a, a a big comics geek uh, mm-hmm. and, he, and he's obviously a big Young Justice geek. Yeah. So that worked out rather well for us, I think. Mm-hmm. And we're going to try and have him on uh, to kind of do what we did, a part two, where we kind of talk about the next um, – the remaining episodes of the season, the second half. Good. Uh, but – so that's then. All right. Now, though, we're going to talk about the Doom Patrol pilot episode, appropriately po- called Pilot because they didn't give it an, a specific name. And this aired just a few days ago on February 15th, 2019, written by Jeremy Carver, directed by Glenn Winter, who obviously directs a lot of the big DC pilots. He directed the Titans pilot and uh, some other like he directed the Batwoman pilot for that presumably will become a new CW series if all goes well. And he directed the Flash pilot and also the Arrow pilot. So – and I think he directed the Supergirl pilot, if I'm not mistaken, as well. Ooh, that's pretty – yeah, that's, that's – so, so he's basically the DC's go-to guy for pilot episodes. And uh, I think he did a really good job with this episode. Um, I did I can't too. Wait to talk, I can't wait to talk about it with you. Um, the the credits, the opening credits right from the get-go, they're so artistic. And, they, and I definitely got a – I know you're not a big credit guy, but – 
um, me being credit guy, uh, opening credits guy, I, I, I really love the feel of it. I love the theme music. It was very creepy, but yet, you know, interesting. And, a, and it had almost like a Netflix feel to the, with those opening credits, kind of like the Jessica Jones credits kind of reminded me of a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, he, what what'd you think? Yeah. Very creepy, which I figured you would like. Yes. Um, I, I did not like them as much because they were so creepy. Um, okay. The eyeball bothered me. Uh, it did? Yes, it bothered me a great deal. <laughs> uh, but um, yes, it was um, very artistic, very um, moody, and and I did not think of Netflix. I thought more of HBO. Oh, really? Uh, you know, something that um, – That level? Uh, yeah, that high end. I, yeah. I really um, – I think this is a very layered yeah. and kind of um, la- elaborate uh, series. This feels yeah. – this feels more like um, pay cable, HBO uh, or Showtime. Right. Then and, and nothing. It's Titans. It's it's not TV. It's HBO. Right. Yeah. I mean, this is, yeah. It very much. And by the way, you were correct. He did do Supergirl. Okay. Um, and he did Legends of Tomorrow. Okay, I missed one, but yeah. yeah. It, so he's obviously the. Um, and because this is also another Berlantiverse production, um, yeah. obviously Berlanti, Greg Berlanti, executive producer, feels you know like. If we're going to do a pilot, we got to get Glenn Winter. He's their guy. He's and their go-to guy. He um, I, he would he would he also directed which could arguably be my favorite um episode of Smallville Legion. Yes, that was a great episode. Yeah. I forgot that he did that, but you're yeah. absolutely right and that's uh Thank you IMDb. <laughs> yeah, thanks IMDb. Yeah. Um but uh so I know Jesse the Doom Patrol isn't in your wheelhouse. Um but um, overall, um, what did you think in comparison – like say, say if you were comparing the Titans' first episode to this episode, um, what would you think – maybe just in terms of production quality or, or story or characters, what, what did you think in comparison to that? Do you think that Doom Patrol had a stronger oh, fir- first episode? By far. I think this is um... – I do not – watching Titans, there is the thrill because uh, I had read Titans books forever, right. the thrill of seeing them um, live action. Uh, being a superhero fan, Legion of Superhero fan, seeing mon and yeah. Brainy on Supergirl, you know, um, seeing Arrow and, and Flash and Black Lightning and all these characters – that come along, you go, you know, oh, I'm so excited, and you may be disappointed how they show them or excited how close they become. I had no feeling of I, – I vaguely remember Negative Man, um, you know, right. the black – Energy being – the energy, energy being, being yeah, flying yeah, yeah, around. The, the negative spirit. Yeah, yeah. I, I obviously remember Robot Man, um, you know – I. I did not. Alas, the girl was more like, from my memory, someone more like, um, you know, Colossal Boy or Reed Richards or somebody. Right. Um, so I didn't have a strong uh, feeling. Right. Um, first off, I, I would argue your show is always better with Alan Tudyk doing the narration. Right. I mean, I don't want to get into that, too specific. No, no, but... no, no. Yeah, and we're, and we're going to obviously yeah. – because you know, one of the things I want – the topics I want to run down, I want okay. to talk about Robot Man and the Chief first. Okay. And then I want to talk about – the second topic, I want to talk about Crazy Jane, uh, Rita, and Larry. Okay. I want to talk about – and then the third topic, I want to talk about Mr. Nobody. Okay. The, uh, there are Big Bad, played by Alan Tudyk. Yeah. But But um, before that, we get into that, I want to – I agree. I thought that the decision to have um, Mr. Nobody, which is this very surrealistic character in the in the comics, um, mm-hmm. you, he gets away here because he breaks the fourth wall. Yes. And I, as a result, 
I thought it was a great narrative device to kind of introduce the characters and to kind of, um, you know, try to get the viewer engaged in what's going on because there's a lot of obviously a lot of strange stuff going on. And, and but 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 no. do it but to do it with a sense of humor. So Charles, what you had is a little bit of camp, a little bit tongue in cheek narration. Right. Yet the show itself took itself very seriously. Right. Um, and that combination made for a lot of fun. Um, yeah. So I I thought the pacing was really well. I thought the setting up the world was really well done. Um, I think the introductions, fo- yeah, of the characters. focusing on uh, Cliff Steele, Robot Man, as kind of your main character, right, um, served its purpose really well. Um, I re- in fact, you know, to pull back the curtain, you know, I had talked to you about Mac, like, you know, Charles. I just don't know if I want to sign up. For right. a regular episode every week, I, I I'm already committed to doing Game of Thrones, right. and so I just don't know if I have room for more than one, you know, episode episodic review every week. And I said, okay, I'm in. I, I just think this is too good of a stuff. Um, I have some nitpicking that when we go through the different topics, but overall, um, spoiler alert, I'm going to rate this pretty high. Okay. Well, good. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. I can't. I can't wait to find out. Yeah. Um. Yeah. With Robot Man, and we might as well go. And that'll be our first topic okay. I want to talk about. So, first topic number one I want to talk about is crawling from the wreckage, and that is a reference. I know Jesse, you're probably not going to get these references. Uh, the title of the, the, basically these are the my topic titles here are going to be uh, references to um, Doom Patrol. Issue story titles. Oh, okay, very uh, nice. Because because this series, this Doom Patrol series, is so heavily influenced by Grant Morrison's run that was in uh, Doom Patrol Volume Two from ni- number issue number nineteen to number sixty three, and this particular title, "Crawling from the Wreckage," was from their first story uh, in issue number nineteen by Grant Morrison, and so I'm gonna see here. I want to talk about Robot Man and the Chief. Okay. And Robot Man, because he is essentially like the character that has kind of existed throughout all the various incarnations of the Doom Patrol over the decades at DC Comics. So he's kind of like the prime character, the prime Doom Patrol character. So it makes perfect sense to make him the focus, especially since he's the most tragic in this case because his body has been completely destroyed and now he's stuck in this robotic form. Yeah. And has to adapt. And so I want to get your thoughts on what you think um, of getting Cliff Steele's backstory that obviously we only got a touch of in the Titans episode. Mm-hmm. And um, and the chief, and especially I want to talk about to, uh, uh, what get your thoughts on Timothy Dalton as the chief taking over from Bruno Bashir. OK, Um I think the first thing is um, the um, Brandon Fraser mm-hmm. is um, just the right amount of sleaze as yeah. you know before he gets hurt. Right. Um, you know he's um, and that's kind of a change from the comics. Okay. Because um, because, because yeah, the Cliff Steele you know before he becomes Robot Man before he's in this accident. Um, essentially it was the, it was just him. He was a race car driver in the comics and he had his accident during the race, Mm -hmm. but here they change it so that, um, Brendan Frazier's Cliff Steele was essentially having an affair with his nanny, probably because his wife was so busy obsessing over working out and not paying attention to their kid. Cause if you notice their daughter got along a lot better with him. Mm-hmm. Than her, yeah. So she probably mm-hmm. insisted on the nanny, but then Cliff decides, well, hey, I'm going to have an affair with the nanny. Well, and, and it looks like and, he's a pretty, uh, he's a serial womanizer, right, uh, right? Because you know he's sleeping with groupies, right? Um, and um, he's on his third wife, yeah. And it 
it and that's a that's a pretty big change from the comics. Yeah, I liked that change. I liked that he um looks he's a little bit um a little bit pumped by success. In other words, right. he's not this um great, you know, super athlete. I mean, he's a he's a race car driver. Right. He has enjoyed the spoils of victory and so it looks like he enjoys you know, good food and good drinks, and he right. does a few drugs, and he's he's just a little wheels off. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, not knowing the story, bought right. into it that he had um, died in the race, and I thought it was right. a nice surprise when later you see yeah. that it wasn't during the race. He actually got drunk and high and called begging forgiveness and was honestly at the moment ready to redeem himself. Right. And then a tragic accident happens. It's like just when he kind of realizes where his priorities should be, yes. tragedy strikes, and then that's yeah. what kills his wife and what he thinks it was his daughter. Yeah, and at this point I'm going to So believe, he loses everything. Yeah, I'm going to relieve Crazy Jane that his daughter isn't dead. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, but you know, we've been lied to before. Yes. So, um, I already, like, I knew the big reveal. I thought it was going to be when he kept talking about, oh, my wife must be so worried, you right. know, like, okay, the chief's just not telling him. No, she's, she's thrilled. She hated you, you know? Yeah. Right. She wanted well, I mean, you to die. Well, there was, there was, yeah, there was that line that she says right when, right before he gets, starts the race, she goes, uh, crash and die, honey. Yeah. So it's just like, well, well, thanks, dear. I love you too. Yeah. yeah. And um, so obviously, yeah, there's this this bitterness in their relationship. And 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 then, um, you know, he's driving around and he sees her uh, getting in, flirting heavily right. with the en his engineer, his pit crew guy. Yeah. And um, you know that just that drives him crazy. And then that's where you think that's what caused the accident. But mm -hmm. as it turns out, well, no, in this version, um, he didn't die. Right. And what happens is, yeah, he's trying to like – he finally, after um, all these issues and they like – they had separated. He she, – she took their daughter. So he was like – and left like boozing it up in a trailer or something. And mm -hmm. then he kind of gets his act together and goes, OK, I guess I need to – get back with my wife and my kid. Yeah. And just when he does that, then tragedy strikes and, you know, that uh, he finds himself, you know, like all of a sudden he wakes up and his wife is dead. He thinks his daughter is dead and he's stuck in this, this prison of a robot body. Yeah. Because and apparently it, only his brain survived. Yeah. And at first, um, you know, he he can't walk. He has to, um, you know, be wheeled around in a little right. cart. Yeah, there's uh, there's this line that, that Mr. Nobody says that yeah. uh, he's kind of wheeling him around like two kegs yes, on, a, exactly. on, a, on a dolly. Um, I thought that was pretty interesting. I thought yeah. the um, – him not being able to, you know, climb the steps and, you know, Rita, you know, knitting – and just yeah. like kind of like, OK, you know, you might want to stop now because I'm tired <laughs> of just hearing you right. do, do, do. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, um, I I really liked how he came across. Um, right. And it, it's I'm a little empathetic to him yeah. because, you know, while he wasn't the greatest guy, uh, this is kind of tragic. Yeah. Um, and what I, th what I think, what yeah. I think you're going to find, I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. No, 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 please. What I was going to say is that, um, what I think you're going to find and where I think they're going with this is that you're going to find that, um, Cliff is going to be a better person as a robot than he ever was as a human. Yes. I could see that. And, and that's his kind of like, this is his redemption, mm -hmm. his personal redemption. Yeah, and where where he kind of finally gets his act together and figures out how to connect with people, 
Yeah. And obviously, and Jane is that that start of that because mm-hmm. Cliff is broken. Jane is seriously broken, but these two have this bond, and this is what was played out in Morrison's run is that um, they kind of help each other along as as the this as the comic book series progressed, and you probably see this in the TV series. Yeah. That uh, that they they kind of help each other, and um, and Cliff becomes a better person as a result. Yeah, um, it was interesting to see the family build, you know, the race cars and right. you know that this elaborate track and um, to kind of also use as a device to show the passage of time. Absolutely, it was. So yeah, I, I really loved it. It was um, he he was. And I like the flashback sequences. Right. I think that makes for an interesting story. Um, and the, you know, how heavy his steps are and all the yes. things. So really great. Uh, when we, I, I have, I have questions, but I want to get through all the characters, and then I have yeah. lists okay. for you to. That's I want, no. I, I, I want can, Charles's. All right, all right. We'll Charles's just I'll, I'll, spin I'll, on this. I'll, I'll, I'll answer okay, your questions you because obviously I I'm a big Doom Patrol fan. Yes, absolutely. So so hopefully I can answer your questions. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's talk about the chief for a moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, now when, when we covered um, the Doom Patrol episode of Titans, you and I both thought um, Bruno Bashir's chief was very unlikable. And you especially because – now, I had known that the chief was controlling. Right. So I kind of expected that part of it, but you were completely turned off by that character, and it really bothered you, I think. So so how did you feel about Dalton's approach? Because I think his approach seems to be more caring a little bit than Bryce Shears so I am, far. I am so glad you brought this up, Charles. Um, and I'm very happy that you remembered what I thought of that. Uh, because, well, yes. I try, I try to pay attention, believe yes. it or not. <laughs> um, I, I did like um, Dalton's take on the chief a little bit better. Um, he, he certainly was manipulative. Right. And he certainly was controlling. But not quite to me – Controlling, and this sounds bad, in a good right. way. Right. Like, I'm not telling you because I really didn't want you – I didn't tell you about your wife and daughter until I thought it was ready because I, I didn't I didn't want you to hurt. I wanted you to be doing better before I shared with you. Right. Um, I, I don't know if he made the right choice of not sharing about his daughter being alive. But I, I, that is the gray area of your seeing it. Yes. But I, I can understand the chief going, this is, what can he do? Yeah. I mean, he's going to show up as a robot, um, you know, and then we saw how things went when they went into the small town. Right. Um, so uh, there's just a lot of discussion about that. So is it, so do you think it's more overprotectiveness? Coming from this version of the chief. Yes, that I had not thought of that word, but that is, I think, a very fair word. Um, I don't know because he's just like you know, don't go out. You're gonna just freak everybody out, and you're you know, yeah. you're gonna cause problems. Just stay here. You're safe here. And and we have not explained why the chief um, has uh, collected this family. Right. Um, you know, but um, on the Titan episode, you felt like he was pulling them together to manipulate them, right? Or for his own devices, right? Like, what can I? How can I help my research along by having these gu- human guinea pigs? On this one, it truly seems, and I don't know why, and mm-hmm. and they may be setting me up to be. De- disappointed right but it truly feels like he's collecting strays for some okay. reason right um he is attached to the 
unattractive puppies that are in the pound, right. you know, and he's getting them to give them a good home. Um, don't know where he gets his money from. It, it, it you know, it's implied that they're yeah. at least wealthy for somehow. Um, right. And so don't know if there's an ulterior motive, but at this point I'm willing in my best Pollyanna attitude that he truly is just trying to – You're willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. Yes, that he is – and I don't know. Is Crazy Jane his actual daughter? No, Because he not. says she acts like she owns the place. And yes. I thought that was an implication that she might be related to and, the chief. And, and le- unless they change something for the show. Okay. So as far as the comics go, no. Okay. She's not. She's not. Okay. No relation whatsoever. Now, the chief does have a wife – which I'll talk about when we talk about our Titans Tower news. Okay. So I'm going to tease that. Oh, very so nice. Stay tuned. But so, what uh, did you think of the chief? So, so what I time? thought, of, what I thought with the chief, I really like Dalton's portrayal. Um, yeah. I've been, I, I've made no bones about it that I'm a big Timothy Dalton fan. I loved him in um, uh, Penny Dreadful. That was on Showtime recently. He was he, wonderful in he, that. He, he plays such a great character. So after seeing him in that, and obviously you know, like I've, I've been a fan of his since Bond and Flash Gordon and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah. but in Penny Dreadful, he shows like this he, – he has that – a very chief demeanor about him, and but he gives it a much more of a humanity. Yes. And – and that's what I thought – I was really hoping that Dalton would bring to this version of the chief once he took over the role that by sheer didn't, is that that humanity, that like, like OK, maybe the chief isn't this – just this completely horrible human being. He does have redeeming qualities. Yes. So th- that makes him a much more complex character I think than just like this big manipulator that's um, – so so much of a bastard and mm-hmm. this version of the chief i think he, there are ulterior, are ulterior motives but because they've changed some things already from the comics they could be changing more things and i don't know okay. i wouldn't say i'm not going to be like looking straightly at the comics i think they're that i think that's a good guiding line of to where to, things to expect but I think they're going to be differences. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of curious if they're going to do that with the chief here. Um, now they've kind of hinted like, well, um, when, when crazy Jane tells cliff that, Hey, uh, the chief lied about his daughter being alive, you know, that, uh, it's like, Hey, I looked all over the internet. She's on the internet. Mm-hmm. And so, and the, Cliff can't quite believe it. He goes, well, why would the chief lie? Yeah. And, well, why did, Why is the chief lying if he's lying? We don't know yet. Right. And, and where are all these other trips that he's going off on? What is he doing there? And what is his secret history with Mr. Nobody that apparently they know each other? Yes. So there's questions there to be explored. So I think – and that's what I think is part of the mystery – and that's what's going to make this character very enigmatic and I think much more interesting to watch mm-hmm. is that you're not going to know exactly what he's up to. Yeah. And that, and that's why I think he's going to be more compelling to watch as a viewer. I agree. All right. Cool. All right. Uh, anything else uh, about uh, Robot Man or The Chief? No, I, I am curious why – where is he going? You know, what does he do? Right. I am curious about the um, his ultimate, you know, long term game. Right. But like I said, at this point, I'm a little. Well, he bit... is a scientist, so he yeah. does kind of find the interesting the the whole uh, science of it. Like, mm-hmm. like when he's trying to build Cliff a, bo- a metal body. Yes. He's watching welding videos to figure out how to make this right. work. He, yes, he's I not, thought that was funny. He's not happy with his work, and he's just like, okay, let me let me study this video and figure out how to mm-hmm. do this. Yeah, um, because because to make up for areas that he doesn't know, like he exactly. can he can keep Cliff's brain alive, but apparently mm-hmm. building him the body was the tricky part. Yes. 
uh, and because he's not a robotics specialist, apparently. Okay. And uh, that's, but uh, but yeah, there. I think with the chief, there's there's definitely more questions that, uh, and that's part of the fun, the part of the mystery, the storyline. I agree. And he's obviously a character to watch. So, uh, so definitely keep an eye on him. But uh, but I, as far as uh, Robot Man, I love Brendan Fraser doing the voice. I think there he he's so good at doing this tragedy, this mm-hmm. this. Um, you know, you can feel the pain in his voice, and yeah, yeah. and I think it's a really great vocal performance by Brendan Fraser. I really like that a lot. Okay. And uh, so I just I I, th- I think it's good, a great casting so far. I'm, yeah, I'm really thrilled with it. Yes. All right. All right. Let's move on. To topic number two: uh, cautionary tales. So this is another Doom Patrol story title. Uh, this was from the next issue, Doom Patrol number 20 okay. of, of Morrison's run. And I want to talk about Jane, Crazy Jane, a.k.a. Kay Chalice, because that's her real name, and Rita Farr, a.k.a. Last Woman, and Larry Trainer, a.k.a. Negative Man. So I want to get your thoughts on the rest of the Doom Patrol in this episode and what you thought of them and their introductions, especially Jane, because – we had seen uh, Rita and Larry in the Titans episode. So, what did you think of Crazy Jane? Um, I liked her a lot. Um, Played by Diane Guerrero. Yeah, um, a very, um, a very interesting character. I, I do nothing about her. Had never heard of her. Um, right. You know, the the actress comes across as very likable. Um, does a good job of flipping between the uh, different personalities. Um, I don't watch Orange is, Orange is the New Black, uh, but I know she had a role in that. I did used to watch Jane the Virgin, and she was Lena in that. Okay. So the actress, uh, I, I like her. Yeah, I'm not um, familiar with her, so. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to learning more of her. I, I was at first worried that – the whole going back and forth personalities would become irritating. Right. Um, from my perspective, they've they they have her be fairly consistent right. in her personalities. Like when we first see her in the hallway, she keeps changing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I'm like, right. okay, that's going to get old. But this one is – it seems to be a little more – not as disjointed, so yes. that that worked for me as a uh, character. So I like her. I don't know if there is a brother sister or something more between her and Cliff, you know, relationship. But there's certainly a bond. I think right. it's too early to have to put a tag on it. But I like the way they're connecting, and so I I like that a lot. Yeah, you, uh, if if they go the route that um, Morrison did in the comics, yeah. um, you'll find there is a reason that that Jane likes Cliff, and okay. it's it's primarily around the fact that because he's a robot, okay, he's not human. Got it. And and uh, and I won't tease anymore because there, it's kind of an important revelation that I think will probably be coming at some point in mm-hmm. the series, but. Um, but there's uh, there's some trauma involved with her as far as I'll, okay. I'll say that. Okay. And and Cliff, you know, it's it's obviously w- what affected her. And essentially, Crazy Jane, who was created by Morrison, by the way, uh, co-created. Um, she's essentially, if you remember the Sally Field movie Sybil. Yes. Okay, where where she was, uh, what they called then schizophrenic. Right. And is now known as essentially dissociative identity disorder. That's mm-hmm. the current term for that. But so Sybil in that movie had all these distinct personalities. They all had their own identities mm-hmm. and their and what they called themselves. Here, Crazy Jane is essentially like that. Only each personality has its own superpower. Yes. So she has sixty-four different personas. Mm-hmm. So – and as a result, has 64 different superpowers. So as needed or you know whatever, that one personality would come to the surface, uh, become the dominant personality, and then Jane would be able to use that persona's powers. Mm-hmm. And 
sometimes with rather unpredictable results uh, because you don't know exactly which personality is going to pop out. And as a result, you know, some of these personalities are likable. Some of them, like Hammerhead, which were introduced here, are not. Yeah. And the ones that aren't are essentially her her rage, as we'll find out. And uh, as a result, she's a, a, a deeply compelling character. And there's one scene I, I love, which is straight from the comics, straight from uh, Grant Morrison's first issue on Doom Patrol, where Cliff meets – uh, Jane for the first time. Okay. During the painting scene, and where where um, Jane is painting outside, and the rain starts coming. Right. And she talks about how the her painting is ruined because of the rain, and she's talking about um, how just uh, you know like um, other people being normal and her not, and you know like everything's messed up. Mm-hmm. And and Cliff tells her to come in out of the rain, and yeah. that that is a line lifted exactly from Grant Morrison's um, first issue of Doom Patrol, and I was really happy to see that because it's such an important. For one thing, it's important because um, it kind of defines their relationship, where Cliff is essentially it's a metaphor for like, hey, you're not out here alone. Right. I'm here with you. You can. You don't have to be out here in the rain by yourself. You can come inside, and I will be with you. Mm-hmm. And you know, and it kind of sets the tone for their relationship as the series progresses. Okay. And I was really happy to see that. Uh, negative man, right? Negative. Larry? Yeah, negative man. Yeah, Larry. So uh, we got to meet Larry uh, in the Titans episode. Uh, here we get some more backstory with him, and probably because of Matt Bomer being cast. Um, they decided in this version, as opposed to the, the comics version, that they decided to reveal that Larry uh, was once upon a time had a gay relationship. And yeah. because it was like the 60s, that was very frowned upon. Yeah. And he had to keep that secret. So he already kind of fell as a, like a monster, and then he has his accident and becomes mm-hmm. an actual monster. And yeah. uh, so what did you think of, of uh, Larry here in this one? So um, – Negative man. Yeah, I I kind of saw the reveal coming right. and maybe because of, uh, you know, the actor himself. Right. Matt is, Bomer, yeah. Yeah, is, yeah. Is, is, is out. Um, right. I, I just don't think it was a needed – subplot um it but i don't have anything against it it's just i don't really know uh the point we'll have to see um i I think it was just to show that he was more already an outsider uh i did not um he was not as there wasn't as much depth to him right as the others um i I think of all the characters, he had the yeah. least, as far as from my perspective. Like, yeah, they didn't really. I mean, yeah. they, he wasn't the main focus in right. this episode. So I don't know he, much about him. He, he did get um, a couple of good scenes. I, I thought that um, the scene where uh, he wheels Cliff outside so he can get some fresh air. Yeah. And Cliff is all like, well, "I can't feel the air." Mm-hmm. And yeah. he's all like, "Sucks to be you." Yeah. And that kind of that kind of defines their relationship that they can feel like they can pick on each other, right? As kind um, of like a they have kind of like a brother relationship. Yeah, I didn't get, I did not understand, um, the purpose of going into the bar to get a beer. Like, yeah. was he going to put a straw in it and sip through the bandages? Was he going to? I don't think we quite know yet. I think I'm okay. hoping we'll I'm hoping we'll get more of that. I think it's just maybe the memory of it. Maybe yeah. he just kind of wanted to experience, like, hey, I used to walk into a bar, be able to walk and sit yeah. down at a bar and get a beer. Yeah, and he kind of wanted to try and recapture that because of now his yeah. condition. So yeah, like it was just trying to be normal. I yeah. think. Okay. That's so, my take on it. All right. All right. Yeah. Um, but anyway, not much thoughts about him 
whatsoever okay, so, yet. All right, all right. Yeah, the, maybe we'll get more of a focus later on. But I think it was right. they were the the heavy focus. I think was on um, Cliff and Absolutely. Jane. Absolutely, I, I think. All right, okay. uh, Rita, the last woman. Um, mm-hmm. I want to get your thoughts because April Bowlby, you know, she was obviously in the Titans episode, and mm-hmm. she's reprising the role here, and I think she's again doing a phenomenal job. Yeah, and, and but and we get her backstory as because of being like an actress in the fifties, and uh, that she was essentially kind of horrible too, a little bit. Yeah, she was a little bit horrible. The idea. Of oh I can't be around someone who is um, only has one arm. Yeah, the, yeah. you know, and it, bo- um, it bothers me. Yes, like so, everything, everything in my world has to be perfect. Right, which is of course, you know, then she becomes imperfect herself. Right. Um, it's I almost think, like the universe, the universe being dishing out karmic justice here. Yeah. It is. Um, she is so. I like her a lot. I, I think yeah. she's um, charming. I think that she carries herself well. Um, she is not uh, totally, um, you know, crazy. Right. Um, oh, what's the famous show movie about the lady? I'm ready for my close up, Mrs. Oh, DeMille. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I know what you, yeah, I know what yeah. you're okay. talking we'll about. Okay, we think of this. Someone is yelling at us right now. I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure they are. Yes. But she is. I mean, she's certainly glad when the waitress is talking about her performances. Yeah, yeah. And everything, but she is not. And you're talking about with like when they go to town and they Sunset she, Boulevard. Yes, yes. And, um, uh, yes, and she, she's, she is, she understands. Um, you know, she remembers fondly her time when she acted and her career but she is also not um i don't think total i think she is a caring person and i do think she does feel a little bit like the oldest sister the good sister like no 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 mom said we shouldn't have a party right you know and then like okay if everyone else is going to all right well let's do this right then if we're going to do a party so yeah yeah i i, I think it's, it's rita's character right now at least in this series yeah. stems more for the fact that yeah she she was this perfectionist everything had to be yeah. perfect and then that one little bit of imperfection just bothered her to the point and then her accident happens and when then her life gets completely upturned she essentially becomes this often hideous freak. Yeah. Until she's able to get herself together, mm-hmm. literally, and um, yeah. and she, uh, as a result, she's lost everything. She lost her career, and so she kind of lives in the past. That's why she keeps kind of looking at these old movies of her. Yeah. And you know, she knows them by heart. She's able to just rattle off the dialogue right along with the movie. Right. And she just – it seems like she lives in the past, and she's kind of bitter about that, that she doesn't have her old life, which you, you see her drinking. You kind of um, – there's a little bit of bitterness, like especially when um, Cliff is – you know, like he's first starting to become aware again as Robot Man, like his visor. You know, you, you're looking through his eyes, mm-hmm. and there's that scene where she kind of um, – says, okay, look, I'm going to be the one who tells you the truth. Yeah. And she lays basically the hard truth on him that, hey, the only thing that survived was your brain. Yeah. And the chief kind of gets mad at her about that, and you know, she kind of feels like, well, hey, um, you know, he deserves to know the truth. So, and she, you know, she's this, it feels like, you know, like she's bitter about what happened to her, so I maybe she wants Cliff to feel bitter about it as well, in the mm-hmm. kind of wallowing that misery in that. Yeah. Or maybe I'm reading too much into it. Right. But uh, but it but it. So what you're going to see is eventually, I think, over the course of her character arc, is that she's going to realize her place and that hey, I can have a different kind of life with the Doom Patrol. 
mm-hmm. and I don't have to just hide away watching my old movies. Yes. So she's got to find herself as well. I think so. And, and reinvent herself, I think. Absolutely. All right. Um, anything else about these characters before we move on? No, no. I, I really uh, – I like them all. I thought the interaction between them, yep. uh, the kind of family uh, feeling was good. They were um, – it helped, as I said, uh, Mr. Nobody, Alec Tudyk, yep. doing the narration with just a hint of – you know, funniness. So yeah, it was, it made yep. for a really good episode. And we'll talk about him right now. Okay. So let's move on to our third topic. Uh, nowhere man, as right. in he's a real nowhere man yes. sitting in his nowhere land, making all his nowhere plans for nobody. Yes. So that's the title mm-hmm. of uh, doom patrol number 26 by um, Grant Morrison. And, and that was a and that Beatles was, song. And a Beatles <laughs> song. Yes. yes, obviously. But that issue was also the um, the the first major appearance of Mr. Nobody and where we got his origin, which is told at the beginning of this episode, which is another reason I chose that title, mm-hmm. because we get the opening. We start the, the series off with Mr. Nobody's origin as we go back to 1948 Paraguay and, um, you know, he, where we see Eric Morden and. Um, getting involved with this Nazi scientist who's hiding out in Paraguay after World War II and he does some experiments on him and turns him into Mr. Nobody. So I want to get your thoughts on Alan Tudyk and uh, playing such a a, a unique supervillain. Yeah, um, you know, what I loved is this whole you know, I would have I spent money, a small fortune Mm -hmm. to get this and then if I'd known what would have happened, I would have paid even more. I would have paid double or something. Yeah, and then yeah. as he's sitting there, you know, being torn apart, and right. it looks like it's hurting him right. forever. So um, I, I I like this. I liked it a lot, and um, he I, – I did not – I was not familiar with the villain – Right. Um, so I. Yeah, this is this is another character like Crazy Jane that was created yeah. by Morrison. Yeah. So I don't know anything about him. Right. Looking forward to knowing more. You know why are he and the chief, um, you know, kind of at odds with each other? But it was it was good. Yep. So I'll recommend that uh, all your answers are in this one book. Ah, this, this yes. Huge, Doom Patrol omnibus that I have here. So, and just, I believe this this thing is heavy and could kill people. It's I like, see that is huge. This I book. also believe has the entire run in it. If you go to right after you watch the pilot episode, um, yes. they have those episodes online. Do they not? Well, they have the comic books, yes. Yeah. Okay. So you could you could go – if you don't want to spend your money on a big, heavy volume taking up space on your shelf, you can read the digital comics on DC Universe. Yes. So if you want, kind of want to get it up to speed, I can definitely recommend that. And Good. if you want to kind of get a feel for Mr. Nobody, um, definitely, st- definitely start with like issue number 26. I think okay. that's a great starting point Good. if you want to learn more about it. But um, so you know, obviously they kind of tease him th- here. Uh, he's essentially the narrator, and he does it in the fourth wall. Uh, yes. So he gets he, he gets to break the fourth wall. So he's talking directly to the audience, and he gets to kind of make some snide comments along the way, kind of you know self you know aware comments, like he's talking about like oh superheroes again, or you know mm-hmm. like oh critics they're gonna hate this show, which I thought was a good yeah. line, and yes. um, that. Uh, you know, just that kind of self awareness, and I think it it's gonna it it kind of it takes out the it, it makes things not so heavy yes. because all these heavy drama and yes. all this body horror, which is essentially what's going on here, is that all this is being thrown at you, but it's being presented in a way that it, it's quirky and it's offbeat, so it kind of lightens things up a little bit. Yeah, and I really liked. Um... I did like the line, you know, critics are going to hate this. Yeah, yeah. Which is kind of just a so tongue in cheek. Yes. Um, Self aware. Yeah, Self-aware. that you know, this is a 
uh, it's a comic book show, so of course yeah. people are going to hate it. Uh, or it's so, so weird they're going to yeah, hate it. Yeah, it's very weird. Yes. Yes. But um, but I just I love that. And then and Tudic, you know, he's we've obviously watched him in Firefly and other v- roles. He's the uh, the voice of K two S O in Star Wars Rogue One. Yes. Um, it was really good in that, and you know, just everything else. Uh, he was on that Powerless show. Probably the one good thing about that show. Eh. He was really good in that. I, I I realized that show did not work. Right. Uh, but it 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 was enough. I watched it. Yeah. Because it was it was trying to be community set in the uni, you know DC universe. Right. Um. So, um, you know, so and- I, I get that. Um, but he was good in it. He was very good in it. He was also very good in the Con Man uh, web series that he right. and Nathan Fillion did, playing a version of himself. Um, was yeah, funny. Al- yeah, he's always a fun actor to watch. I yeah, love watching him. And the moment I knew he was cast for this, I was just ecstatic because I knew he, he'd kill it in this role. Absolutely. And I and I really like the the special effects they're doing for Mister Nobody. Mm-hmm. Um, because uh, you know the um, let's see if I can I don't know if I can show Jesse here. Let me pull up the a good picture to kind of show where the comparison. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay, here's a good one. Okay, so Jesse, I'm holding this up. Ah, so that's, yes. That's Mr. Nobody in the comics. Okay. Who is this? This he's like not quite in this dimension. He's not whole. And so the way they depicted him here on the TV series, I was really curious about how they were going to do that, if he was just going to be completely CGI. And they kind of went with an option to kind of show a little – like a, the bottom half of Alan Tudyk's face with his eyes. Yes. And then you know his body's all chopped up as it's kind mm-hmm. of like probably partially in other dimensions or whatnot. And mm-hmm. as a result, it makes him really interesting to look at. And, yeah. you know, and with with Tudyk rattling off those lines, it's it's just it makes him for a really interesting character. And I, I'm looking forward to seeing where they go. Yes. Uh, we should include an image of that when we're uh, when yeah. Rob drops the episode. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, we'll try and post uh, if you're, you're not familiar with it. I mean, obviously, you can go on Wikipedia, but uh, yes. but uh, we will try and post a picture on mm-hmm. our Titan Talk page. Absolutely. But but. Um, Curious to see what happens. We're kind of left with a cliffhanger that uh, Mr. Nobody uh, confronts the chief, kind of hints that they have kind of uh, a past interaction mm-hmm. at some point. We don't know what yet, uh, but the chief is obviously uh, – does not like Mr. Nobody, mm-hmm. and um, uh, we'll see because the Mr. Nobody ends up like opening up a big black hole kind of like vortex in the middle of the street. Leaving Cliff going, what the f? Yeah, exactly. And um, we'll uh, see how the how the team deals with this. Um, several um, f bombs. Yes. This is, and we get um, Again, nudity th- and sex. Yeah. This is yeah. definitely a grown up. Um, right. Even if Teen Titans was uh, adult, this is truly adult. Right. Yeah. But um, you kind of – I mean in the one scene where like Cliff is having anal sex with his his nanny, you could mm-hmm. kind of expect that. Yes. Um, and the way they did it, they kind of just showed it like, oh, OK, one boob is popping out. Yes. So it wasn't like full – like. But then when he had sex front. with the groupie, right? That was all the boobies. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. And yeah. then – but I think that again, this is another situation like the Titans – series Mm -hmm. where they're just dropping enough f-bombs that it kind of loses its impact yeah you know and they're like like if if they had gone the entire episode and then Mm -hmm. the only f-bomb you got was when cliff sees that vortex Mm -hmm. i thought it would have been much more impactful Mm. i thought it would have been you know like it would have really punctuated that yeah and sold that moment better Mm -hmm. yeah so like so that's that's my take is that you know like I have nothing against f bombs I would use them here, but yeah. I, I respect Rob Southgate yeah. and Southgate Media so I try not to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think there are times when a good f bomb you know 
perfectly timed, it, you know, sometimes fits the moment. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, and just, uh, so I think that like sometimes less is more, I guess is my point. Sure. I get that. Okay. Doesn't okay. bother me. And it just, I mean, I did, I still found it effective, Yeah. but I, I understand why you're saying that. Yeah. Yeah. I just, yeah. Mm-hmm. I just think that like, you know, maybe that doesn't use it, don't use it so much. So it, you know, it doesn't come off as just gratuitous, mm-hmm. yeah. I guess is my point. All right. Uh, anything else about Mr. Nobody before we move on? No. All right. Uh, so do you have any favorite lines of the episode? Nope. We now have questions. Questions for okay, Charles. Wait. All right. So Jesse has questions he must pose. Yes. So pose your pose your questions, Jesse. Okay. So um, as I sit for, back in my chair. So Cliff had been with them many many years. Correct. Yes. As far as the TV show goes, yes. Yes. So why would have Jane been gone all that time? Well, apparently she comes, have, and, she comes and goes as she pleases. Yes, but that was like eight years he was there, yes. wasn't it? Eight or nine years? Right. That just it seems is. a long time where he would never have met her. Now, maybe she came while he was still, right. you know, being worked on. But I thought that was a – Like why, but why hasn't he met her before is your yes. question. Yes. Yeah. My – well, again, this is, this is something that's not from the comics. Right. So um, – my guess is that maybe Cliff was kind of off in his room, you know, with okay. his track and just, you know, like isolate because we don't, I, we kind of get an idea, a rough idea of how big the manor is, mm-hmm. but um, we don't know exactly how big it is. Okay. So maybe like Cliff's off in one wing and doesn't come out very often. Okay. Or, and Jane maybe shows up in another wing. Um, and only interacts, you know, like maybe Rita goes back and forth, what have you. It does seem weird that, yeah, after all those years that they, the two had never met. Yeah. Okay. And, when and they, unless it's just the, unless yeah. it's just they they kept missing each other. Yes. Now that um, they decide to go into town. Yes. Um. Don't understand how Crazy Jane was able to paint the bus so quickly, but right. we'll we'll skip that. Right. Maybe um, it was one of the personality superpowers. Yes, maybe so. Um, Super speed. When they go and then the chief panics, oh, we have to leave, oh, we have to leave right away. Right. What exactly are they planning to do when they go back into the city to protect the town from what? What exactly do the youth do they think that they are protecting the town from? That was confusing I, to me. I, I don't think they know. I think I think Cliff because we saw that Cliff was willing to go back by himself. Yeah. And then the others, like they were gonna go off and then they turn around and come back. Right. So I think Cliff thought that like once he found out that, okay, but there's something out there. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to go face okay. it. And I think the others were just like, well, I don't know where Cliff's – like I don't know what we're going to face either, but you know, we need to be there for Cliff. Okay. So that's my answer is that I don't think they knew what was they were facing. Okay. I think, that, I think they were just – Cliff went out to face it. They went out to support Cliff okay. and be with him. It, facing, um, facing whatever. Yeah, it it just seems it. I guess I'm supposed to be all impressed yeah. that they're doing this, but I, it it just didn't make any sense to me. Okay. Um. Any other questions? No, I think I will have later. I'm I'm okay. curious where the chief gets his money. I, yeah. I'm I'm curious why they're doing this. Well, presumably um, patents or something because yeah. he, he's a scientist. Yeah, but it was um, – no, I don't have any. And okay. uh, I do not have any quotes, uh, so I know you did. Yes. Um, so please share. Okay, uh, real quick. Uh, so um, I was the first – one of the first quotes in the series, Mr. Nobody. Mm-hmm. Ready for a story about superheroes? <sighs> More TV superheroes, just what the world needs. Yes. Be honest. Have you hung yourself yet? Yeah. 
great line. Um, and there's that exchange between Rita and Cliff where she kind of gives him some hard truth as he just mm-hmm. as he's kind of waking up. Um, Rita goes, the chief's a good man, a big heart, a little odd, maybe a little vague, but it comes from a good place. Me, I'll always tell you the truth. The chief told you the world assumes you're dead. Did he tell you that because that's because the only part of you he was able to save was your brain? And Cliff goes, no. Rita replies, which means we need to talk about expectations, what you really, really want. Cliff says, I want to go home. And Rita replies, and then we need to take those expectations. We need to give them a gentle pat and flush them into the ocean. Okay. So a little bitter there, Rita. Yes. Just, just a little bit. Um, and then the exchange between Larry and Cliff, again, whether he wheels Cliff out to get some air. Larry says, I thought you might like some air. And Cliff replies, I can't feel the air. And Larry says, sucks to be you. Yeah. And Cliff replies, hey, what was it like getting buried in a pyramid with your cat? Yeah, that was a cute line. I did like that line. Yeah, so obviously making fun of his mummy appearance, which is, again, one of the things back that has gone back all the way to 60s Doom Patrol. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talked about the critics. What do they know? They're going to hate this show. And then there was the scene, obviously, with Jane and Cliff where she's painting that I really liked. Um, this is Jane who explains that it's not Jane. It's the hangman's daughter that Cliff is talking to at this moment. Okay. And Jane says, do you remember what it felt like? And Cliff's like, what? Jane says, to be normal like them. Cliff says, sometimes I try to remember. Sometimes I hope I still will be. Mm -hmm. And Jane says, I don't even know what to hope for. My painting's ruined. Everything's gone wrong. And then Cliff pauses for a moment and says, coming out of the rain. So it's a, it's a very poignant moment between the two where Cliff reaches out to her. So you had this guy who's kind of self-absorbed. That was a bit of a hot shot. But he's reaching out to this woman who's obviously troubled. Okay. And and the the two of their the relationship is one of the the core foundations of Morrison's run and hopefully this show. You, you know, know that's I I get the feeling since I've never read the comics. Yes, that's important. You know, when I went and saw the Watchmen at the right. theater, um, I wanted to hear that. Um, you have to understand. I'm not in here with you. I'm quoting it wrong, but yes, you're in yes, here with me. You're with me, yes. Yeah, that, that Rorschach, I, Rorschach. I had to hear that line. Yeah. So I can obviously tell yes. this is one of those lines yeah. that was imme- very important in the series. So well, good- it, it, well, it is because it, it actually it gets um, reset at the very end of Morrison's run. Mm-hmm. So so from issue 19 all the way to 63, at the in issue 63, it calls back to that moment. Yeah. Oh, so cool. it's so it's kind of that important. Of yeah, a I like their relationship. I, I like it all. I like all. I like all the way they're interacting with each yeah, other. And we'll, and yeah, and we'll see how it goes. And uh, okay, there's, there's a there's a grant there's a issue coming at least in this in the comics where um, Cliff his mind is projected into Jane's and he gets to kind of go inside her uh, psyche and mm-hmm. interact with her various personalities directly. And uh, I'm, not, I'm really hoping they do that episode because that would be a really cool one if they do it right. Ooh, sounds like it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So what's your rating for this one? Um, you know, I, I really liked it a lot, Charles. I was I went in with very little knowledge of the Doom Patrol. I'm sure I'd read yeah. some of the original run. Um, you know, I never was a big, um, you know, I'm 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 still not a huge Grant Morrison fan. Right. Um, but uh, I really, really enjoyed it. So, you know, I'm going to give it nine um, race car tracks. OK, that sounds good. 
So you really liked it then. I did, uh, yeah. You thought that was a really good production. All I right, did. Cool. I thought of a lot, yeah. Yeah. Well, we're actually in sync, believe it or oh, not. Oh, good. Uh, I gave it nine ruined paintings uh, for obvious reasons. But, uh, yeah, I just – I thought it was a much stronger first episode than Titans. Yes. Um, it seemed like the, like all the mistakes that Titans had made, Doom Patrol and under showrunner Jeremy Carver, who wrote this episode – he figured it out. He like he paid attention and goes, "Okay, we don't need to do that. We need to do this." Mm-hmm. And so I think yeah. he learned from it. At least maybe he did, and maybe it was just like you know a nice happy happenstance. But um, it it certainly feels like they learned from the mistakes of Titans rollout. And yeah, and I they, agree. And it, as a result, it becomes a much stronger production. So yeah. so we'll see if the rest of the series follows that. But yeah. it's but it's a much more promising start, I think. Yeah, and it's it's a good story. I mean, they right. told us a good story. They're setting up right. things. So yeah, I agree with you. Yep. All right. Uh, real quick, and you know, we have some Titans Tower news. I want to cover. Okay. Um, just want to uh, an update on Titan season two. So I thought I'd share that since okay. we can get back to Titan talking some Titans, actual Titans here. It uh, looks like, according to Geeks Worldwide, that Lex Luthor might be turning up in Titan Season 2. I saw that. Because apparently they have a character description for a, a new villain codename Dax, which of course sounds a lot like Lex. Yeah. And the description, of course, is mercurial and unpredictable. Dax delights in the element of surprise. Awkward and unpopular as a young boy, he insinuated himself from – or insulated himself from others and developed masterful skills of manipulation. This led to a successful career as a criminal where he had a unique ability to catch the enemy off guard with his unassuming nature. Having spent many years in prison for his crimes, Dax is thrilled by the opportunity to get to work and create chaos for his foes. So oh, that good. kind of certainly fills the Lex Luthor description. And if they're introducing Superboy, uh, the Connor Kent Superboy, uh, that makes perfect sense because Connor Kent's Connor Kent is created uh, w- was created in a lab with a hybrid of Superman's DNA and Lex Luthor's DNA. So it makes perfect sense to uh, if Superboy is going to be there to have Luthor there. Yeah, I still don't think they need to go with Superboy, and I'm I. I... I know they aren't going to listen to me. Yes, but you know, I, they haven't finished playing with the toys they have. I know, so, I know, okay. I agree, and, okay. and especially if they're going to do the Judas contract. So yeah. maybe that could be the third storyline yeah, after they so. wrap up the first two. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll see. Um, and apparently, second season of Titans is supposed to start filming next month. This is Good. February, so that means March, and supposedly going to wrap up in. Toronto, provided there's no reshoots, sometime in September. So I'm guessing probably somewhere October, November, we might start getting the first episodes. Okay. And so kind of close to where we were, I'm guessing. Good. And uh, other than that, um, got some Doom Patrol news uh, just real quick that uh, apparently Jeremy Carver, the showrunner, uh, said at the the Television Critics Association that um, he's teasing – uh, the characters Celsius, Lodestone, Danny the Street, and the Beard Hunter from Morrison's run. Um, Celsius is actually the wife of the chief. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna we can talk more about her later because uh, I know we're running long. Um, but uh, definitely a character I would find really interesting to mm-hmm. to see, and um, and we'll see how the, that works out. So okay, I just thought that good. was kind of cool. So, yeah, very nice. Uh, all right. Now, we do have one quick feedback uh, mm-hmm. this time. We got actually some feedback from DJ Nick. So, hi, hey, DJ Nick. Yes. Nick, Nick Pizzagone. And um, so Nick writes in because he was really excited to talk Doom Patrol, as Jesse saw from the instant messages that we got. Yes, he is. Yeah. He really wants to talk Doom Patrol with us. We're gonna So we're going to bring Nick in. For when we do our wrap-up show after the 15 episodes of Doom Patrol air. Yeah. And uh, so Nick writes in, hey, guys, in one word, wow, 
this could not have been a better debut to what will no doubt be a strange, unique, and I'm sure a very entertaining series. Mm-hmm. Origin, origin stories can be grind, always be grinding, but in this case, we're, we're handled with panache, guile, and fun. A great job was done by all actors, writers, and directing staff. I may never look at donkeys the same way again. <laughs> See you next week. Ciao, my friends. And yes, so, I guess. Ciao, if, ciao right back at you, Nick. Yes, I guess I could have used um, farting donkey. Donkeys, ga- yeah, farting, farting donkeys, donkeys. Yes, donkey yes, gas. That, yes, that would have been a good one. But, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah uh, really good stuff. By the way, um, as a side note, DJ Nick is my guest uh, uh, on this week's uh, set. Leslie Bruce. Um, no. As we record this, and this will probably get out this week, yep. provided I get it edited in time, uh, which I will. Uh, so, yes, you can go over to Set Lusting Bruce um, and hear uh, DJ Nick and I talk about his uh, passion for music and yep. about the radio show. So check it out if you liked Nick. And uh, we are probably going to have Nick join us uh, toward the end of the season for the another wrap up because he was a wonderful guest star. Yeah, he brings a lot of fresh energy and and also kind of a, like I, I pointed out to him, it, it doesn't feel like you know, hey, it's just Jesse and I rehashing what we exactly. already discussed. So Absolutely. he always gives a great, great fresh perspective. I think he does. So Charles, if someone yes. wants to give us feedback, how can yeah. they? Well, if you want to be like Nick, and who doesn't? Uh, you can tell it to Titan Talk at Titan Talkcast at Gmail dot com. That's TitanTalkCast at gmail.com or on Facebook at Titan Talk, the Titans podcast. Or you can drop us a line on the Twitter machine at TitanTalkCast. We'd love to have you. You uh, let us know what you think of Doom Patrol. What did you like about the pilot? Uh, things you didn't like about the pilot. Stuff you want to see in the series. Stuff you don't want to see in the series. Uh, we'd love to know. Um, so, and so far, I think Doom Patrol's hitting everything right out of the gate. So, uh, hopefully you feel that way as well if you're watching, and um, I'm hoping you give this series a chance if you haven't already, because uh, I think it's going to be very surprising to a lot of people. Yeah, I, I think it's 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 something very different. Yes, this is um, this is not your typical superhero TV show. Yeah, I, I think it is. It, it's very clever. Yeah, and so we'll see where it goes, but. Uh, just you know, just kind of a, expand your horizons as far as what you view as superhero TV. I think is a good Absolutely. way to do it. Absolutely. Yes. All right. Um, as for me. Yes, uh, Charles. How can we find more of your fine work? Uh, well, I don't know about fine work, but you can find me at at Charles Skaggs on Twitter or at Charles Skaggs on Instagram, Facebook, of course, at Charles Skaggs in Hilliard, Ohio, or my blog at Geeky Things. Oh, that's not it. That's the wrong sound effect. No. Sound effect fail. Damn good coffee and hot. Damn good coffee and hot, where I talk about all the stuff we talk about here on Titan Talk, including Titans, Doom Patrol, uh, anything news of upcoming shows on DC Universe, like Swamp Thing or Stargirl, and um, uh, otherwise uh, news of my other podcasts, um, Next Stop Everywhere, the Doctor Who podcast, which is uh, going to feature the return of Jesse here next week. Absolutely. As, as we talk about um, the Lazarus experiment. I'm looking yeah. forward to that. So Jesse's coming back for that. Can't wait. Um, and then uh, also Ghost with the Twin Peaks podcast they do with Zan Sprouse, wife of comic artist Chris Sprouse, where I talk about all things Twin Peaks, David Lynch, et cetera, et cetera. How about you, Jesse? Um, I am um... – can be found on Twitter at Jesse Jackson DFW. Yep. Um, I am currently uh, the only other podcast I'm doing right now is my set lesson Bruce, uh, which continues to come out every week where I talk to fans of Bruce Springsteen and um, fans of other musicians. Um, and I've in the planning stages to do something a little bit, uh, special for March. So that's a tease. I'm not announcing it yet, but I'm in the plans to do something. I'm uh, officially intrigued. Yes. Uh, and so I will. we will be back next week to talk to Troll, and uh, I'm going to continue to about once a month stop into Next Stop Everywhere. Right. Though you have had some really 
um, great guest hosts yes, with you. I'm, I think that's we been – we, we have been very blessed with great guest hosts to make me sound somewhat tolerable. That, well, uh, that you know they're they're they've been great. Uh, we've had Fred Firestein, we've had Lee Leonard. We just I just recorded with Christine Peruski before we uh, got on here, and uh, obviously they can't fill your shoes, Jesse, but um, they help keep the uh, next stop everywhere train moving along. And I'm very appreciative and thankful to all of them. Well, and you don't want them. You, you, the whole idea. Is you know you're kind of doing a um, a guest star, so you want them to be different. Right. It keeps the show fresh. It keeps uh, our listeners going, and uh, so I really appreciate all of them helping out while I'm out doing other yeah. stuff. Yeah, we obviously miss you, but we understand you know your circumstances. Yes. And uh, if we can't have you, at least we have them. Ah, very nice. And so. But you're, you were obviously sorely missed. So everybody, Thanks, Charles. Um, we, we love hearing from you, Jesse, and uh, we want to hear from all your listeners. Uh, let us know what you think about Doom Patrol. I think it's going to be a lot of fun for everybody as we wait for Titan Season 2. And uh, next week we're going to talk about Donkey Patrol as we find out what happens uh, with that wacky vortex and Mr. Nobody. And uh, what's up with that fart and donkey anyway yeah what so, is that i don't yes. know that's because uh i'm kind of curious about that what's the deal so uh we'll find out and we'll get the introduction of cyborg as well so Good. uh looking forward to that so everybody come on back and we will see you next time right here on titan talk the titans podcast bye everybody goodbye